Good afternoon. Welcome everyone to the Shift Wizard web live webinar, Transformational Leadership at the Bedside with uh, Dr. Jennifer Jackson. Uh, Jen is here, ready to bestow some knowledge upon everybody uh, joining us today. So thank you for joining. Uh, we see people still joining um, here on the webinar, uh, but we're going to go ahead and get started uh, as we have about uh, 45 minutes here with each other. Um, just Real quickly, my name is Jeremy Brewer. I'm on the executive team here at Shift Wizard, uh, and we are very happy to have Jen Jackson with us here today. Uh, Jen has been a nurse for over 20 years, uh, 15 years as a nurse leader, uh, including uh, several of those uh, at the sitting in the seat of a CNO. Uh, she is an adjunct professor at the University of Cincinnati in the DMP program and also does independent consulting uh, with nurse leaders around the country. Uh, so I'm going to hand uh, the controls over to Jen, and she's going to talk to us today about transformational leadership, what that looks like at the bedside, and how it can impact uh, what you do each and every day uh, in, your, uh, in your work life. So Jen, take it away. Thanks, Jeremy. Excited to be here today. Excited for the opportunity to kind of go over um, some objectives with the group on the line, we um, hopefully by the end of the call, you'll feel a little bit more knowledgeable about transformational leadership, what is included in the principles around transformational leadership and how you can utilize that both in your day to day work, as well as when you go to work on very specific projects around quality, experience, safety, efficiency, really all the day to day operational um, focus that a nurse leader would have in the organization. And then we'll wrap up with just a couple slides related to sometimes we experience barriers and sometimes we um, experience difficult situations and how we can utilize transformational leadership in our day-to-day -day workflow to maybe improve those communications and that work style. So before we get too far into the presentation, I want you to take a second and really think about the, you know, your last really difficult day. You know, how many of us have felt like this where we're sitting in the emergency room or sitting in a, our office or sitting at a patient's bedside and all we can think is, could just one more thing go wrong? Has anybody had that morning? I'm sure maybe one or two of you have, but hopefully we're going to give you some insight to move you forward and um, maybe some tools in your toolbox because really that's what transformational leadership is about. So today we're going to take a little journey. And what I'm going to ask you to do is take a second and think about the best mentor and leader that you've ever had and the qualities that person had. And then I want you to take a second and think about the leader that you just said, gosh, I got to change jobs. I can't work for this person anymore. And think about the qualities that that person brought to the table every day. And we're going to visualize this as a journey. It's kind of like a hike. So for those of you out there who are um, avid hikers, um, many of you start at the beginning of a path and you have no idea what you're going to find along the way. And a little bit transformational leadership can help us to maybe better guide our path and our workflow so that we have a little better expectation. Because really at the end of any project, end of any path, end of any journey, here's what we've got. You either have a choice to take the safe side, which you can take the cute little three frogs and run with it. Or you can choose the riskier side where at the end, you're not exactly sure what might be at the end of that journey. But if you know and you believe in the leader that you're following and you're taking that path in a really strong way, at the end of it, it really doesn't matter if the snake was poisonous or if the snake was really cute and you could pet it. It's the risk and the journey along the way to get there. So let's talk about transformational leadership. How many out there think that you have to have a title to be a leader? I've heard this many times. They'll say, oh, because of who they are, oh, they're a director, oh, that's the CEO, oh, that's the CNO, oh, yeah, they're a leader, we have to follow them. How many have felt like that? Well, guess what? Leadership is not about titles. Leadership is really about empowering and making sure that you understand the why and having a mission, vision, and value when you show up every day to work. So again, let's talk about some assumptions. Has anybody ever done the uh, trust walk, the journey fall? Have you ever wondered if the person on the other end is going to actually catch you or you know, walk you off that cliff? Well, 
oftentimes in leadership, we do make assumptions. We make assumptions that um, because people have titles and because they maybe come to the table and are enthusiastic, but there's no meat behind any of that. And what we really want is someone who has both the vision, the mission, the values to do what they do every day and bring meat to the table. So transformational leadership is not about making assumptions. It's not about thinking um, that just because I am who I am, I can then make a project happen. And as you think about this, I want everyone to take a second and pick out a, a project that they've been given, because that's what we're going to kind of talk about and say, have you ever been given a project where you knew before they even handed it to you that you weren't sure it was going to be successful? Have you ever been handed a project where you said, this might be successful? And then you've been handed one where you're like, easy peasy, I got this. Well, there's two individuals that um, I could not talk about transformational leadership and not talk about. And so if you've not read anything by Joe Tsai, he came out with the Florence Prescription um, from accountability to ownership. It's kind of cool. Florence Nightingale reappears in modern day healthcare when we all like five minutes to talk, pick her brain about modern day healthcare. Um, but, you know, he says in his book, accountability is one thing, but if we don't challenge the status quo and we're not authentic about how we do that, then we really can't move our teams and our groups to ownership. And the best way to improve our metrics is to have owners on our units. And then um, Simon came out with, start with the why, how great leaders inspire everyone to take action. You know, he really challenges, challenges us to make sure that we understand our why, because people don't buy um, what we do, they buy why we do it. They follow us because of who we are and what passion we have behind us. And so simply stated, our why is really important. And you'll see that come up as we start to talk about transformational leadership. And so who doesn't go to my favorite, um, uh, you know, internet website, Wikipedia, to find your most fantastic definitions. So in its purest form, transformational leadership is a style of leadership where a leader works with, for you guys, your associates and or your teammates to identify needed change. We always have to, again, remember, challenge the status quo. We have to create a vision to guide that change. And then we have to inspire those around us. And once we've done that, we'll have a committed team to move forward with a project, no matter what that project is. And so when you think about transformational leaders, I threw a few up on the screen. Each and every one of us can probably come up with several that we might envision, um, you know, support the values and the qualities. But here's what I want you to think about for a second. Do you think that any of these individuals ask somebody, hey, is it okay if I become a leader? Do you think that they said, you know what? I think today I'm going to like empower some people. No, what they did was they said, I have a, I have a vision. I have a passion for what I do. And I'm going to carry that forward. I'm going to create something that doesn't exist today. And I'm going to do it in a way that I set the example first and foremost. Every one of these individuals, you'll see all these great transformational qualities in. So when you think about transformational qualities, what do you think about? And many of you are probably thinking about that leader that you would follow anywhere. Well, here are some of those qualities that they probably um, have within them and they probably role model for you every day. Think about it. They're always very optimistic. You know, their glass is always overflowing or at a minimum, at least it's neutral. It's never empty. You got to get your glass overflowing. They're going to embrace the challenge. They know the difference between sympathy and empathy. We as leaders have to be empathetic to the challenges that we're asking our associates to step out and do every single day, right? One more thing you have to document, one more computer checklist that you have to do. I mean, we've made bedside nursing harder. We've asked people to do more with less. And so as leaders, we have to make sure that we're stepping up and we're demonstrating that as well. So I feel like you can't ever go through a presentation and not talk about the history of where something came from. So transformational leadership was actually born out of a couple of sociologists who said, you know what, why do people choose politicians? Why do we elect who we elect? 
why do we look at these individuals and we say, you know, why was that person such a great, we'll use presidents, for example, why was that person such a great president? Why did he get reelected a second time? You know, it's about leaders and followers helping each other to advance to a higher level of both um, their inner um, motivation as well as their external motivation. And so when these two gentlemen really started talking about transformational leadership, they said, you know what? It's really about characteristics. It's really about what we embed in ourselves. So many times you hear a lot about um, leadership theories. And so transformational leadership is more of a human leadership theory. It's more of, you can take bits and pieces of transformational leadership and embed it in what you're doing every day. You don't just walk out on a platform and say, today I'm gonna to be a transformational leader. You have to utilize the tools. And in a minute, we're gonna learn about the four principles of transformational leadership. And you'll see how those can interact to make your style of leading for your teams, your departments, your organization a little bit stronger. And so as you um, flow through this process, leadership can only begin when we have met the higher needs and the lower needs of the Maslow hierarchy of needs. I mean, if we don't have the basics for our individuals that are working around us, and if the project we're about ready to do, we haven't handed that leader that information, they can't aspire to utilize these human leadership theories and traits. So it's all about motivating, positive reinforcement, and movement in the right direction. And so Gandhi tells us, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. You can see why he was a transformational leader, because he embodied everything that he believed in. And he did that in a way that millions of people followed him. They believed in where he was headed and what his vision of the world looked like. So transformational leadership has four principles. There are four components to it at the end of the day. Each one you can use independent of the other, or you can utilize all of them together, particularly when you start to work on a project or when you're trying to influence a group to move forward. So we're gonna break down each one of these a little further for you. And so the first one that we're gonna talk about is the idealized um, influence. And this leader is really, it's all about the role model. It's all about walking the walk and talking the talk. Have you ever said, I'm never gonna ask you to do something that I wouldn't do, and then you walked in a room and you scrubbed a toilet? That's really what it's all about. Because you can't ask somebody else to scrub the really gross toilet if you're not willing to take that risk. And so people will follow leaders who stand next to them who you know, go down to the emergency room when it's falling apart and you take that bed and you push it upstairs and you help admit that next patient. I did that on Monday with my team and it, it was wonderful for them because they felt like I wasn't just asking them to work harder, I was willing to work harder with them. You ought to have to, have to be willing to take that risk. You have to make sure that you're following your core values and that ultimately that will bring your followers to trust you. They'll have confidence in their leader. They'll say, you know what? Maybe I don't get what you're trying to do today, but I'm gonna walk down this uh, path with you. And I don't know what's at the end of it, but I'm there with you. We also then have to use um, motivation. We have to inspire and motivate others. It's probably the hardest part of our job every single day because we have to take that positivity. I say it's the on-show part, right? From the moment you get out of your car to the moment you get back in your car, you're on stage. It's kind of like the Disney model. It sounds a little cheesy. You know, I, I often say to people, have you ever ridden, you know, it's a um, wonderful world down in Disney. Well, let me just tell you, if I was the person who had to stand across that bridge and like welcome people and send them on their way, she w w welcomes each of those boats as if it was the very first group she saw that day. That is about positivity and energy and being on stage. And so we have to make sure that we understand but here's the catch. If you're not clear about the vision, the future direction, the motivation, the reason, then people lose sight of why they're doing what they're doing. And so I would ask you to think about that, particularly when you're taking like a shared governance group and you're gonna sit down with one of those subgroups, maybe your unit-based council, maybe your nurse executive council, and you're gonna ask them to do something a little different. 
this is a great way to make sure that you're constantly laying out the right direction and that you're pointing them in that optimistic future that's ahead. And so then you have to have that individualized consideration. This is where we as leaders really have to take a step back and understand what helps to bring the best out of our team. The leader must be able to recognize and determine these things through both observation as well as individual conversation. You know, it's true when they say 30, 60, 90 day onboarding meetings with your new hires retains people at the one year mark. It's because of this individual coach, coaching that happens. Active listening. It's the most important thing we as leaders can do. I always say, listen before we talk, because what you learn in those 30 to 60 seconds can mean more to the next 60 to 90 seconds of your conversation. So you have to be able to understand where those individuals on your team are. So again, if you're looking at a shared governance model, if you're looking at a unit-based council, you have to understand your president. You have to understand what motivates them, what brings them to the table, and what helps them to ultimately bring the, their best self to work every single day. So individualizing our leadership style, it's a little more work for us on the front end, but then on the back end, the magic happens. You can put a group together, you can sit them around a table, and you can say, I know you're really good at data crunching, I know you're really good at you know, the more abstract thought process. I know you're really good at going out and communicating. And each of these individuals will feel really empowered. And so then the next project they work on, maybe you ask them to go a little outside their comfort zone. It's not a bad thing. And then finally, you have to have that intellectual stimulation. You have to make sure that innovation, and we're gonna talk about kind of disruptive innovation here in a minute, but it is important. You can't just do it the same way. We've all heard the saying, right? If you keep doing it the same way, you're going to keep getting the same results. And then I'll have someone say to me, well, that group of nurses has been here for 20 years and they've done it that way and they're not going to change. Well, I'll tell you, any 20-year nurse, they're itching to learn something new. They just need to be invited to the table to learn something new. And this is really where that intellectual stimulation can happen. And so I challenge you to really think about that as you're – you know, involving people in decision making as you're challenging the assumptions that are being made. And then again, it goes back to that vision. Have you communicated it? And do people understand the bigger picture of the why? So when you do all these things together, I call it the magic. The TL happens. The transformational leadership then becomes a part of who you are. Because when you're doing all four of those concepts, that's what makes you a transformational leader. It's not any one part. It's all of them put together. And so when we think about transformational leaders, again, I brought up a few more. Who doesn't love a little Deming every once in a while, right? Who's read him at nine o'clock at night? Have you lasted till 9.15? He's great. I love his theories. He is the father of statistics. Between him and Florence Nightingale, we have to thank them for every stats class we've ever taken. But what he says is a bad system will beat a good person every time. And it is the reality at the end of the day. And if we're not utilizing transformational principles, then guess what? Bad systems eat us up. And so make sure that you're taking that step back and you're saying to yourself, am I? Is the system, are we working in the right direction? Or do we need to take a pause? Maybe the project you're working on is not going the direction you want it to. It's okay to say, you know what? We're going to throw all this out and start over. Have you ever had one of those moments as a leader? I have. It was more nerve wracking to say we're going to stop and throw this out than all the rest of the magic happened after we got rid of it. So don't ever be afraid to say to yourself, am I making it worse? And so transformational leadership strategies, it's kind of like these penguins. It's kind of like that moment. There's a lot of short and long term variability to everything we do, right? Healthcare is changing. As much as we'd all like to say it's going to stay like this for the next five years, it's not. And what we thought when I became a CNO 12 years ago, what I thought 12 years ago nursing was going to look like today, gosh, it looks so different. But here's the question. If you're the pingo in, in the front of the line, if you're that CNO, if you're that bedside charge nurse, if you're that nurse manager, and if you're the only one who jumps to the other side of that iceberg, is that really made your unit successful? So really think about that. 
And so leadership strategies can look very different. And so when you're thinking about transformational leadership, here are some other things that you might want to utilize. You can lead through change. You can demonstrate that lead. You want to make sure you're always developing your employees, whether it's a 15 minute here, whether it's an article that you send out, whether it's a 15 minute conversation at a huddle. You want to make sure that you're driving them forward. And you want to leverage emotional intelligence. If you haven't spent a lot of time reading about it, I'd highly encourage you to. Um, it really helps with some of that motivational learning. It really helps as you're doing that one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'm not going to spend time on it today, but it's probably a great future topic for you to take some time to learn more about. So you can't do a nursing presentation and not talk about our good old Florence Nightingale. You know, she really you know, germinated that seed. She really planted the roots of how we become who we are. Just imagine if she hadn't been transformational in her time, we nursing would not look the way it looks today. I mean, she went as far as to say, you can keep letting soldiers die or you can send me some lemons and limes and I'll make them better and send them out to the battlefield. Well, you can only imagine how much people thought she was crazy, but yet she believed in it. She said, give me some sunlight, give me some air, give me some lemons and limes, I'll make these people better. And she did. And she urged us still today to continue to embrace our practice, learn and move forward, which is what all of you are doing today and the opportunity that Shift Wizard has provided you. And so Florence um, has kind of 10 leadership principles, I think that she puts out there. And um, I think in my reference section, you'll see uh, the article, but look at those. They look just like what we talked about earlier with transformational leadership. It's all about your attitude. It's all about, you know, and not all of us have great days. We got to figure out how to turn it on when we need to. And so we're going to take a second now and move into innovation. Innovation is really all about harnessing our inner creativity. And some of you out there might say, I am not very creative. I am an introvert. I do not create things. Well, guess what? You all have it in you. It's just a matter of pulling it out because innovation is really about taking and renewing, moving a service, creating something new, looking at a process and changing the outcome. That's really what innovation's about. You don't have to, you don't have to um, create the next widget. You don't have to produce the next amazing cure to whatever disease in nursing or in healthcare. All you have to do is say, hmm, I'm going to challenge that process today and I'm going to try something different. That's what harnessing your inner innovation is all about. And so, you know, the National Health Service Institute for Innovation and Improvement, because, of course, everything in the government we have to have a service for, is challenging us. They're telling us that we have to do healthcare differently, that nursing practice has to step out there. So guess what? When we're thinking about nursing practice and being innovative, what four concepts might you be able to pull to the table and say to yourself, gosh, am I doing all four of these things to transform my nursing practice? And so when we think about um, how to line this up, nursing and innovation look very simple. And if you put this down on a piece of paper and you said, what are my organizational um, values, what's my organizational environment, and then what are my personal? This gets back to your one-on-one -on -one coaching, right? You talk to your associate about what are the mission, vision, values of the organization, and then guess what? The associate talks to you about their personal goals. This is about making sure that you understand if these two things line up, if your system is sharing and communicating, guess what your associate's going to be willing to do? They're going to be willing to take that step. They're going to be willing to network where they never thought they could network before. Who has two units that hate to talk, right? We all know unit blah, 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 doesn't like to talk to unit blah, blah, blah. Those nurses, those nurses. Well, guess what? If we lined each of those units up and said, here's the organizational goals, <coughs> here are our units goals, innovation suddenly becomes possible. And so when these three things come together, the intersection of innovation happens. You have to have creativity. You have to have an environment that promotes that. And then people feel empowered. And feeling empowered is what we need to do. 
So disruptive innovation in healthcare. Guess what? People don't like it. But there are lots of ways to think about it. Change is inevitable. Change is going to happen. The question is, are we on the train or not? <clears throat> are we willing to make this transition? Are we willing to engage? Are we willing to walk out to our staff and say, you know what, guys? Our scores are in the lowest percentile. This can't happen anymore. Let's move forward. Let's talk about what the vision is of the hospital and make sure that we're maximizing that. And so as a nurse, what should we do? You as leaders have to make sure that you're personalizing your management style and you live into it every day. <clears throat> you can't choose it. You can't change it. You have to embrace it. Learn what you don't know and transform what you do know. You have to encourage. Encouragement is about being creative and innovative. Then you have to guide, motivate, inspire, but you can't do any of that without being a role model. So you'll see the trend here. And so when you're working on a project, I think this slide is simple, but so helpful. Make sure people understand the objective. Why are they there? What change needs to happen? Just don't say patient experience needs to be better. Say nurse communication needs better, needs to be better. And specifically, we need to talk about you know, the care plan that we're providing the patient. Or we know that um, responsiveness needs to be better. And so what we know is that we need to make sure that patients are getting to the restroom when they need to. <clears throat> so make sure that you're empowering that. Make sure that you're bringing quality data to the table. People have to know what the data shows. They have to understand how to interpret it so that they can use that as a tool in their toolbox. You have to engage. Two heads are better than one. Never try to do a project on your own. And then set those goals to transform your business. This gives the owners of the project a clear plan of action. They need goals. They need objectives. Those are two different things. And so managing difficult situations can be very interesting. Believe it or not, the picture on the uh, right is from St. John, and I had this exact conversation to someone sitting out on a porch one day because managing difficult situations and having those conversations can really feel uncomfortable. But here's, again, one very high-level slide that can help you. If you understand your own conflict threshold, it makes it a lot easier when you're dealing with others who are having conflict. Don't think of conflict as adversarial, but an exchange of ideas. We all need to exchange ideas in order to move our practice forward. Practice empathy, not sympathy. Empathy means that we may both think about something very differently, and we both could be right at the end of the day. And if we're a transformational leader, we're pulling that tool out of our box and saying, I'm going to step back and understand what motivates you. Make sure that you're practicing and that you learn, you're learn. you always learning something new. Curiosity is the best thing we can have. Proactive act, act of listening. I can't emphasize enough that many times you can resolve a conflict quicker when you use active listening. And then share your viewpoint. Seek first to understand theirs and then take the time to explain yours. Because once you understand where they're coming from, they will be more likely to understand where you're coming from. So with that, one of our first presidents told us, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, and do more, and become more, then you have become a leader. And by utilizing transformational leadership, you can do that. And so this is a nurse who works in one of the hospitals I used to work at. She does this whole mountain jumping experience, and um, she takes a risk. She takes a risk when she does it, but the thrill at the end and the experience at the end is just amazing. So the question you have to say is, you must do the thing you think you can't do. You have to take that step. So are you ready to take that challenge and become an innovative transformational leader? Thank you, Jen. Great having you here today. There's a very poignant and uh, important message to really what we all in healthcare uh, experience each and every day. Those of us from the shift wizard size as, as we're trying to uh, go out and, and have these conversations with CNOs like yourself about how best to um, 
you know, solve one of those problems for their staff, which is their schedule and, and the difficulty of managing their schedule. Um, at this point, we're open for questions. Uh, if you're on the WebEx, you'll see that uh, there's a question section. Feel free to um, type away and, uh, and add a question there. We'll be sure to have uh, Jen answer that. Jen um, is a trooper today, a little laryngitis uh, creeping in on her. So you may have heard a call for two there, but uh, a, a true professional pushes through and uh, she did that today. So that was great. Um, so as we wait for some questions to come through, uh, Jen, one of the things that, that you were um, just talking about in, in transformational leadership, I think is taking those risks and, and, you know, regardless of where you are within the organization, right? And so talk a little bit about how I'm a, I'm a fourth year nurse. I just got my, uh, I just got my master's. Okay. And so I'm, I see myself or want to be a, a leader going forward, but you know, there's that, that taking the risk is your friend that, that jumps, there's that risk of how do I put myself out there? How, how do I really push my, my comfort level uh, to the point where I, I'm good with, with taking that chance, I guess you would say. Yeah. So I think that individuals really have to under, know themselves. What am I really good at? I think if I'm a new um, nurse on a unit and, you know, we'll talk about scheduling for a second, you see an opportunity to maybe do the schedule different to, you know, gosh, we could retain more nurses if we, you know, we had a suggestion come through once, you know, that said, you know, if we could staff share weekends, would that help to improve people's satisfaction of their overall workflow? Or if we had moms work nine months out of the year and then they got summers off with their kids, could we maximize, you know, that that nurse's knowledge at the bedside, but yet still get them home with their kids in the summer? And so I think you know, as a new nurse who comes out excited, you're a few years in, and at that point in your career, you're like, oh, I don't know, should I, should I bring my idea forward? Is this, you know, that's where we as leaders get to really help to empower those individuals to bring those ideas forward. And they get to say, you know what, that's a great idea. Let's talk to the col your colleagues about that. Let's take this to the next committee meeting. And instead of sending them on their way, mentor them there, take them there, sit next to them, show them how it's done, allow them the opportunity to, to do something that maybe they haven't done before. Great. And I, I know we could probably do a whole nother <laughs> webinar on this, but one point that you did touch on is EQ or, you know, oh, yeah. so as, as a leader, um, talk a little bit about EQ and how you as a leader in the past have used that um, to help you be the transformational leader that you want to be. Yeah, so I think it goes back to those one-on-one -on -one conversations, getting to know your employees' strengths and weaknesses. And so there's lots of tools out there that individuals can take, you know, um, emotional intelligence, you know, tests, and they can tell you where they land on the bracket. But um, I think it's about the conversation. It's about understanding what the different buckets are and then making sure that you understand how each individual leader fits into that bucket because when you have all of the same in one bucket then they don't tend to do you don't have, you don't have a productive project mm -hmm. because you can't have all the same leaders on the same in the same uh, category so understanding what each of your leaders are good at whether you use emotional intelligence whether you use the disc whether you use whatever product is out there, it, the important piece is around the conversation. It's around understanding what do you believe your strengths are before a test tells you what your strengths are. Because we tend to embody what we believe our strengths are, whether something else tells us that or not. Sure, sure. Um, let's approach this subject as a transformational leader. Um, drama. Oh yeah, drama. <laughs> so there's no drama in hospitals, right? No, none, none, <laughs> none. So um, as a trans transformational leader, how how do you take how do you deal with drama? I guess you know whether it's interdepartmental, whether it's um, interpersonal. Uh, you know, it could be there. There's massive amounts of, of drama because we're humans and, and, and we're in healthcare and we care about people and about patients and about our opinion. Uh, there's a reason why there's a lot of drama, but, but how in the past have, have you been able to separate um, drama from how, from getting the job done? Yeah. So I think, 
I, it goes back to, I think when I finally learned what active listening was, mm -hmm. it really helped to change that approach. So when you think about typically whenever there's drama between two units, like many times there's drama between the emergency room and a floor because the emergency room just wants the patients up. <clears throat> and so when we think about um, helping the floor to understand what's going on in the emergency room and then helping the emergency room to understand what's going on on the floor, it tends to um, bring people down off their escalated state potentially. And once you bring people back down to, okay, we're all here for one thing, which is the patient in the bed. What's the right thing to do today for that patient in the bed? I think that's when you can redirect the drama away from that feeling of, you know, kind of that he said, she said, and more to, okay, this is what we got to do today. We came to work for this reason. We're patient focused. We're patient centric. What is the right thing to do? And so many times I will, you know, I call, I call it the 30 second time out. I pull out the sports analogy and I'm like, we're all going to take 30 and then we're going to start with, you know, let me hear what you have to say. Let me hear what you have to say. Now let's all bring it together. Because honestly, at the end of the day, that's what people really um, want to see. They really want to just know that their voice was heard because whatever is going on for them at that moment feels real. And whatever's going on for that other individual, it feels real. So that's where we as leaders have to pull out that sort of listening skill set and say, I understand where both of you are coming from, but here's what we're going to do today. Helpful. Very helpful. Thank you. Um, again, if there are questions that uh, you have to be asked, uh, there is a question area uh, in the drop down menu on the go to webinar uh, that you're, you're welcome to, uh, to ask a question there uh, for Jen. Um, I think we have a couple coming in. There's one. Is it risky to go against leadership, the leadership team as a beginner nurse with ideas? Uh, you know, being shut down isn't very fun. No, you're right. It isn't very fun to be shut down. And I think that um, as we as leaders have to embrace kind of that um, that uh, disruptive innovation, we should invite at, you know, nurses at all levels to really step forward and bring those ideas to the table. And I think as nurses, we learn to bring data, we learn to bring best practice. And when that's brought to the table, then the leader has to take a step back and listen to that because it's really offering an opportunity that um, maybe we didn't know was there. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Here's a great one. Um, let's scroll up here. A uh, quick question, will we get the slides? Yes, the slides will be made available on shiftwizard.com. Following up uh, this, uh, everything has been recorded, so you'll be able to see those there. Question for you, my name is Sandra. Hello, Sandra. Um, I, I work at a psychiatric unit, uh, IP. We have a particular situation that has been ongoing for years. Nurses come and go at the speed of light, per se. This includes management. Uh, what I've identified as one of the main problems is crunching numbers. That is, I understand that the business has to be profitable. However, the group that gets a big punch is nursing, is nurse staffing. At the hospital level, nurses are suffering from short staffing. That causes the revolving door nonstop. It appears as though nurse staffing um, is done according to the numbers and not acuity. Uh, so we can go down the acuity question. This is it's a two two sided question, I think, first, but um, you know, thus scaring the new generations away. Please give us insight how we can remain profitable without affecting nurse staffing. It's a well, big question. Great it, question. Thank you. It's a great question. Um, you know what? I, it, so I always start out with staffing to say you can't run <clears throat> a unit or a hospital without nurses. Right. Patients come to hospitals because they need nurses, not because they need most of the time the rest of the care providers. They're there because we're the ones who are taking care of them 23 hours um, out of the day. And so I think we spend, you know, we have I have these conversations every day, but in um, data is important and data can be powerful. But we cannot forget 
the acuity and the care of the patient at the bedside because some days it takes more nurses and some days it takes less. What we as nurses at the bedside don't do really well is on the days it takes less, maximizing sort of our ratio pool. And then on the days when it takes more, it gives us the opportunity to up that pool in a meaningful way. And so I think that, you know, it's the inevitable healthcare question. What's the right ratio, nurse to patient ratio to, to staff units? Um, and I think that each unit, it has to be an evolving process. I think it has to, um, and my, my trick to you would be to go back and um, in particular use the slide that talks about sort of how to manage a project and sort of make staffing a project, make it um, part of what you do every day. And instead it will become less about the numbers and more about how, um, you transform the culture within the unit because the turnover usually indicates the culture is not healthy and that you really have to take a step back and say, okay, this is going to be a tough road, but we're going to, we're going to run on it. Mm -hmm. And so your, your question is great. Um, and happy to talk about it more with you offline. My contact information I think will be available and, um, you know, talk about more specific ideas because I think this one gets a little deeper into let's actually talk a little bit in the weeds. So happy to do that. That's a good segue. Um, you know, uh, Jen is a, a consultant out there. So Jen, if something you've said here today really struck a chord with somebody and then we'll talk to you a little bit more, how's the best way to go about getting in touch with you? Yeah, so we'll um, add maybe my email at the end of this and then you guys, can either that or I'm on LinkedIn, so you can reach out to me there as well. Um, either or whatever works best, we can give you, I can give you that contact detail to put with the slide deck yep. okay. so people have Great. it. Great. So you'll be able to contact Jen either through LinkedIn or her email as we'll put on here. Um, don't, don't see any other questions coming in and we're right up at 145. So we want to make sure we're uh, giving some of your time back to you today. Uh, thank you from Shift Wizard for joining. Uh, you know, Shift Wizard, we're all about uh, challenging the status quo ourselves uh, in healthcare, and uh, and we do that through uh, delivering the best what we believe the best way to schedule within the industry. Um, so if you want to know more about Shift Wizard and about what we do, uh, feel free to go on over to shiftwizard.com. Uh, all of the the uh, webinars that we have done in the past are up there. We provide a lot of great content because we believe it's re very important to get good content in the hands of nurses and and you know we were built by nurses for healthcare so uh, nursing is our passion um you can also come meet us uh at some upcoming trade shows aone is the april 10th through the 13th in san diego we'll be at booth 501 and then the a and a meeting in orlando is the 23rd through 26th of April, uh, we'll be there at Boost 719. So either shiftwizard.com or uh, come see us at one of the shows. Uh, we generally have one of the more rowdy booths, so I think you'll be able to find us <laughs> with all the, the purple. <laughs> <laughs> that is the truth. So Jen, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, thank you for everybody on the line, and um, you all have a great rest of the day. Thanks. <laughs>